Blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He will release me from the nets of all my foes. He will protect me from their wicked hand. Beneath the shadow of his wings, I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. A blessed day to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers, it's a joy to welcome you to the celebration of this Eucharist. And it's our privilege as members of the staff and the pastoral team to be able to make this available for you to participate from the comfort of your home. Let's pray together. Let's celebrate this Eucharist together that the Lord may continue to bless the world, heal wounds and warm hearts. And so to this God who heals us with the spoken word, let us together give glory.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see the great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all, that I, what I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. you have the words of the 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then they came to Capernaum. And on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not like the scribes. In the synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Words are cheap, but words that are cheap can also be dangerous when spoken carelessly and irresponsibly. 
but it is given to us, to each of us with the intellect to discern what word to follow and what word to believe and to trust. My dear sisters and brothers, a couple of years ago when I was back home in India, it was election time, and while walking through the bazaar, I came across this huge billboard, election campaign. And it depicted a meadow with a lot of sheep, a flock of them, a herd of sheep. And it, right in the view of the sheep was this huge billboard within the billboard, depicting a wolf dressed in business suit, all smiles, teeth, white teeth and sharp, and these words beneath, I'm going to eat you. And one of the sheep reads these words, and very proud that she could read, turns to the other sheep and says, he says what he means. You have to be impressed with how convincing he is. My dear sisters and brothers, the gospel of the day tells us that Jesus wasn't sounding convinced, but he was very convincing. Unlike the Pharisees and the rabbinical teachers, Jesus wasn't merely sounding convincing, but rather he was indeed convincing. So much so, his audience would say, what is this? A new teaching with authority? Because at Jesus' time, every teacher of the law would always appeal to the Torah and to the prophet Moses. But Jesus alone could say, you heard that it was said, but I say to you. And not only that, he could turn to the wind and the sea and say, be still. And they would be still. Or he would turn to the man with paralysis and say, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And the man would pick up his mat and go home. Or again, he would turn to a little girl, the dead body of a little girl, and say, Talitha kum. Little girl, I say to you, arise. And the girl would arise from death. Jesus wasn't merely sounding convincing. His words were powerful. As I said a little while ago, words may be cheap and may turn to be deadly if used with ill intent. But words can also be powerful if they are used by the right person for the right motive. God spoke and the world came to be because God's word is powerful. What God wishes, what God speaks, what God articulates come to be. And that is the story of creation. God spoke, the world came to be. And he spoke again, and you and I came to be. And all along in the history of humanity, God has been speaking to us. But because we couldn't understand him fully, God would deign that his word should take on flesh and be in our midst physically. And that would be the story of the incarnation. Christ, the second person of the Trinity, would put on flesh and be born as Jesus. And John would say, and the word 
became flesh and lived among us. And later on, John would go on to say, we proclaim to you what we have seen, what we have heard, and what we have touched. And they were so very convinced of the power and the love of the words of Jesus that they would go singing to their deaths. And Jesus wasn't merely sounding convincing, but he was moving them. When a sincere word is married to authentic action, that is when people are astonished. That is when people are moved. You know, it is possible, we find in the world of today, that words, cheap words, when manipulated, exploited, used with ill intent, can cause havoc. But that same word, when spoken with love, spoken by the appropriate person in the right way, for the right motive, it can heal wounds and warm hearts. It can breathe life into you. It can uplift your spirit. And that is what we hear in the, sec in the gospel of the day as prophesied and foretold in the first reading of the day from the book of Deuteronomy. You and I can, like Jesus, or following his example, can speak words that are powerful, can speak words that are inspiring, can speak words that can build up and provide what is needed so that what we say will do good to those who hear us. But then, the words that we speak should be followed up with action. Or as we say, the liturgy we celebrate should be married to the life that we live. Our work and worship should be combined together and then they become a powerful witness to the love of God. And so, as we go through the Eucharist, let's realize that our words can heal wounds and warm hearts, just like Jesus' words. And the words of Jesus are healing, and his healing is also a teaching. Parents and dear sisters and brothers, in the same way, our life is a sermon, and we need to mind what we preach, because our life, like word, reveal, they manifest, they make known, they communicate, they lead people. And the question is, are we leading them aright, or are we leading them astray? Because our life is a sermon, and we need to mind what we preach. Let's profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
Let's raise our prayers and petitions to the Lord and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the authoritative teachings of Jesus will guide and challenge us as we seek to be more authentic disciples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation, that our legislators and officials will hear and comprehend the needs of the powerless and the marginalized as legislation and priorities are developed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our parish community of St. John Vianney, that each of us, whether celibate, single, married, or widowed, may seek God first in our lives and love others with the love with which God first loves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have mental or emotional illness, that God's love will strengthen, heal, and sustain them and help us to accompany them along life's journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who exercise authority, that they may use their authority as Jesus did, to free people, to heal the sick, and to build up the community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For healing and strength, that God will heal the sick, curb the transmission of the coronavirus, sustain all who care for the sick, and guide those who are working to administer the vaccine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those of our parish community who are sick, especially Maureen O'Keefe, Peter Smith, Jordi Borge, Dick Beale, Margaret Roth, Margaret Lobo, Margaret Balch, Joan Pfeiffer, Rich and Diane Valahovic, Jennifer Mellon, Dylan Vasanko, Kathy Maloney, Lucia Alvarez, Isabel Sergis, John Doherty, and others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the well-being of Vincente Sorengen, for whom we offer this Mass, and for the repose of the soul of Sebastian Arena, Grant Tedenen, Bob Mason, and Jackie Smith, whom we pray for in a special way that God may bless them with eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now pause to pray for the special intentions of the families of St. John Vianney. We remember the various benefactors for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As I thank you for your generosity towards St. John Vianney, in particular towards the continuation of its many good works in the form of various ministries, I'd like to invite you to register yourself to give in an electronic way, the electronic funds transfer, because uh, that uh, helps us to plan for the future, keeping in mind your giving and uh, that would help us in the long run. We thank you for your generosity. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. Living by God's truth is holy and sure, God's presence is everlasting. God's truth is eternal. 
eternal, bringing us justice, bringing God's justice to earth. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. God's word is precious, desired more than gold, worth more than we dare imagine. And sweeter than honey, this word will feed us, bringing fulfillment and joy. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer Spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. Pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. And we pray that you bless Vincente Sorengen with good health. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, fulfilling your will and gaining for you your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his, his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Sebastian Arena, Grant to Denon, Bob Mason, Jackie Smith, Jean Maloney, Father Marvin Levin, and Virginia Varela, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, especially on Vincente Sorengen, who prays for your blessings, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our beloved spouse, with St. John Vianney, Don Bosco, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art what? in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is, it is in, heaven. in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As you engage in spiritual communion, I would invite you to continue to pray for the healing of minds and hearts in our nation. Not forgetting those that suffer from COVID-19 and all who care for them and minister to them. dwell in the songs that we are singing rising to the heavens rising to your heart your heart our praises filling up the spaces in between our frailty and everything you are you are the key Till I rest in you, till I rest in you. 
as we conclude the Eucharist. Let's pause for a while and pray for the repose of the soul of Eugene Maloney. Most of you may know him as Jean. He was a good man, a very committed family person who loved pushing around his wife Kathy in the wheelchair. He was also taking care of our library, a well-informed person, very dignified in his ways. He passed away three days ago. Let's pause for a while and pray that God may bless him with eternal rest. He was a blessing to those that knew him. And he was also a person who was very generous towards the parish in many ways. And so, let us, as an appreciative and grateful community, pause for a while and pray for Jean. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let, let perpetual, perpetual light shine, shine upon him. him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. And we pray that you bless Jean Maloney with eternal rest through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to give you a reminder, if you have not been confirmed yet, this is a great opportunity. Uh, we have online classes that begin in March and you will um, gather uh, with those others that are going through the uh, confirmation preparation and you will actually be confirmed in May. And this is a wonderful opportunity for you to receive the sacrament and for all of us as a community to um, help you and help to the Holy Spirit to be poured out on you and on this community. We also just want a reminder uh, that if you're not registered, if you're not receiving our flock notes, to make sure that you do contact us, that you register, that you're on our flock notes. Last week we had um, live masses rained out, so we communicate with you that way, and we want to make sure we can communicate. And then finally, we wanted to give you a little hint about what we're planning for Lent. Um, we'll be replacing the adoration of fr on Friday at 7 o'clock with uh, Stations of the Cross on Fridays at seven o'clock during Lent. We'll have them online at seven, but we'll also have live stations at 4.30 here at the church. And we also plan to hold a Lenten retreat. Um, we'll be inviting various groups uh, to an online retreat, and uh, you can look for that invitation on Flock Notes. And then also, um, you, we will have four masses or four liturgies on Ash Wednesday. We'll have the online streamed one, which you can receive ashes afterwards at 8.30, but also on Ash Wednesday, we'll have liturgies at noon, at 4.30, and at 7 p.m. So these are all the beginnings of uh, our Lenten journey, so let us uh, get ready to prepare. Ash Wednesday is going to be February 17th. Thank you. I'd like to welcome you to come and join us for uh, the Mass or for the ritual on Ash Wednesday. Uh, those of you who want ashes on the forehead, I'm willing to impose it on your forehead, of course, with uh, disinfected hands. And for those that may not want any physical contact, you could have them imposed on your head without any physical contact. Know that we are here for you. Come, let's pray together and draw closer to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, be God. to God. Come to us, you who say, I will not forget you. Be with us, you who say, do not be afraid. Take hold of us, our hearts, our minds, our whole being. Make us your own. Now is the time. The spirit of love, crush the pain of hatred. Spirit of hope, stand before. Do not be 